a laser level versus a traditional level. Which one's better? Can one do a job that the other one can't? Or can one do a job more easily than the other one can? For many years, this was the only level we had, was the traditional level. It did every job that we needed it to do. Was it cumbersome? Yes. And it is cumbersome, especially if you're working by yourself, you're working on a wall, you're trying to lay out some wainscoting, or you're trying to do something like that. The laser level will fill those shoes very nicely. Today, we're going to look at the strengths and the weaknesses of both of these, and I'm going to tell you which one I would pick if I could only have one. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. I've also provided a link down in the description for several of the tools that we'll be using today. If you use those links, it does not cost you any extra. However, I do receive a small percentage. Traditional levels come in many different forms. All the way from a line level, what you can hang from a string if you're laying out deck posts or something like that. You need to pour the cement, you need to get your concrete sleeves in the ground. This is going to be your ticket right here. Then we have our pocket level. This is for much smaller tasks. We have a standard size level, which is for, you know, your average task. And then traditionally, the longer the board, the longer the level. You have your four foots and your six footers. You even have some eight foot levels. And those would be used for floor joists, for other very long pieces of wood that you need to get installed accurately. If you've ever used a level, you've noticed that some levels, the bubble is tight between the lines and other levels are not. And you may have even heard a carpenter say, if you've been around carpentry, it's between the lines and it's good enough for me. Traditionally, rough carpentry, you may hear that, you may see that but it can lead to problems down the road because between the lines is about an eighth of an inch. All of these, even the laser level, are accurate plus or minus one eighth of an inch. It's not the end of the world in rough construction, but if a carpenter says it's between the lines and that's good enough for me multiple times on a job, it can really lead to a mess. So knowing how to use a level as well as a laser level is very important. Let's take a closer look at this traditional level and then we're going to get into that laser level. So as you can see, the bubble in the level is touching this line right here, but there's about an eighth of an inch gap away from this line. And when you're using these levels, you typically want to get that bubble right in the middle, just like that. I'm lifting the one end up a little bit to get it to go there. Sometimes you'll hear a carpenter say it's between the lines, it's good, but it's not always good. That is not perfectly level, that is. And as you can see, it's the same thing with most levels. This is the same way, about an eighth of an inch gap. This one is a little bit closer. There's only about a sixteenth of an inch gap. And the line level is showing almost perfectly in between. These are not known for a great deal of accuracy, nor are these. The pocket levels are a little bit shorter. Sitting on top here, we should be getting all three bubbles the same. And as you can see, they're close, but they're not exactly the same. Not only will a level check for level, it will also check for plumb. Obviously, this one will not. This pocket level will check for plumb. And the pocket level will also set you at a 45 degree angle. Not all levels will have this 45 degree angle bubble in there, but some of them do. Every level will help you set up plumb. The nice thing is if you have a cross beam laser level, it will also set you up for plumb. If I'm laying out a window opening, this would be my go-to level. If I'm laying out a door opening, this would be my go-to level. This is what I would check plumb with, and this is what I would check level with, except for potentially the top of the door opening. I would revert back to this guy right here, but this one would do all my plumb layout. 
This is a Bosch Professional GLL30 laser level. I like this laser level a lot. The one drawback to it is that it is near impossible to use outdoors when the sun is shining. If it's an overcast day, you will have a better chance of seeing the line. Early evening or very early morning are your best chances of seeing the line. I have used this to do some siding layout and some other things from one side of the door opening to the other where you have to hit that siding dead on and so that they line up when you get to the top and you snap that piece in. A laser level is very handy for that for an outdoor type use. The laser level also comes with this clamp. It's a little clamp pedestal that's adjustable so that you can move it around, change the alter the height a little bit. And this would be intended to clamp on per se your sawhorse or your step on your ladder or anything around the job site that you can clamp it onto that you could get it to be the correct height. Let's head inside and get this laser level turned on. Here's one thing the laser level can do that a traditional level just cannot and that is cast a level line on two walls at the same time. This is very handy for when you're doing chair railing or you are doing wainscoting any type of a work like that where you need that level line you can do this with a traditional level but the setup time is way more so in some cases the setup time for the traditional level is zero you grab it you check it for level or you check it for plumb but when it comes to doing layout work like this there is no beating this laser level because once you set it to the height then you are very good to go. One of the disadvantages of the laser level is dependent on the floor type. This is a wood floor. If you were trying to do this and there were multiple people moving around, walking around, doing other jobs on a wooden floor structure, you would get this. The line would be moving around and all I'm doing is putting a little bit of pressure on the floor by the tripod. It's set up in a tripod right here. And it will wiggle around with the it's very sensitive so it's just a little bit of movement will make it wiggle around so you either need to be on a wooden type floor working by yourself what I like to do traditionally is get to where I'm going to be and then I'll put a piece of tape on the wall once it moves stops moving around like that I'll go ahead and get me a line on it that way when I bring it around the corner to continue down, as you can see, the line fades out to almost gone, or it is gone. It's only casting to about right here. I can see it very faintly, but it's not anything I would rely on. If we were to use a level to lay out our wainscoting or our chair rail, we would measure up from the floor or 32 or 36 inches wherever you want to put your chair rail or your wainscoting height to then we would come in off of that line that we made on the corner and get our level once we had this nice and level on the wall we would hold it tightly against the wall and scribe a line then when you come around the corner you would transfer your line slightly around the edge and then line up on it this way get it nice and level and continue around the room scribing your line then you would work off of the line down here and so on and so on it would take a long time to set that up it can be done and it has been done it's been done for a lot of years before the laser level came along the laser level just made that easier and faster so that's what I mean by it depends on the job as to what level I grab which one is going to save me the most time and give me the most accurate result in this case for crown molding for chair railing for wainscoting that laser level just can't be beat it can find high and low spots and floors it can do a lot of things that these can't in that aspect not that they can't it's just faster to, to do it with the laser level to check doors for a plum this is also an excellent
tool for doing so but the setup is just a little bit longer and as you can see hopefully I've got it set up right inside of the door stop that this door is fairly plumb until we get about two feet from the ground it takes a little dip in when it comes to checking a door opening for plumb I am going to the traditional level every time it is quick it's easy you stick it up here you have a look at what you've got and if you're installing the door which is typically when you would use this then you are going to check the hinge side first very fast very easy you're going to correct any issues with that stud before you install your door the laser level takes a little time to set up and then you're going to be moving it out of your way so that you don't bump it or knock it over and then this is the way to go if you're checking the top of your door opening for level I'm going to move down to a shorter level and I'm going to get it up here and I'm going to give everything a look and once again if that 2x4 needed adjusted before I put the door in I'm going to adjust it then to make a smooth installation when I installed this shelving unit a couple weeks ago I double checked everything with this laser level easy to set up easy for me to have sit there and see what's going on as I'm getting this in place to make sure that I'm setting it up plumb if I had to put some little shims under one leg or the other because of variances in the floor then I could have done that at that time and got this unit nice and level now I also took the little pocket level and set it in here on the shelf to give it a check that way the pocket level sitting on the shelf you can see that we are right between the lines this is dead on level and that is exactly what I wanted for this install the laser level can also be used to install crown molding typically you would use a bracket that mounts to the wall in an upper wall location the bracket has some adjustability to it so that you can get the laser level exactly where you want it on the upper wall you typically want to shoot it from all the way across the room I'm going to just hold it up here as you can see the distance that the laser is shooting the line is very short it's going on and off like that because it's not happy with how level it is but as you set it further away the line will grow so to get this to cast that entire wall I would need to be probably exactly the width of the room away or to have this mounted on that wall unit where it would be exactly the width of the room away so as you can see the advent of the laser level truly sped things up in job layout and accuracy when it comes to those long runs it's not hard when you're moving your level along the wall laying out a line to get that line off a little bit meaning if it's a little closer to the line one way than the other the line could kind of zigzag across the wall it's not the end of the world because when you install your chair rail or your wainscoting anyway you'll typically have a level sitting on top of it or someone will be holding a level on top of it as you pin nail that to the wall if I had to choose between the traditional level and the laser level I'm picking the traditional level every time this is more in the realm of the work that I do if I was a finished carpenter I might feel differently I might say that the laser level would be my level of choice luckily in today's world I don't really have to choose either one I can utilize both of them and that's exactly what I'll do I hope this video has given you the knowledge to better choose the right level for the right job accuracy and speed are two great things to have and both of these devices can give that to you if you enjoyed yourself click on the playlist or the video that's going to pop up next to me and remember to always respect the power of your power tools we'll see you soon